I'm an artist whose work relies on the interactions with others, so this is great, hearing people interact. Instead of creating work by myself in the studio, I invite public as participators in my projects. I provide platforms for people of all different backgrounds to share their stories. In my project, Dreams for Free, I set out to find out what people would do if they suddenly increased their wealth by millions of dollars. What would you do if you won millions of dollars today? Think about it. Taewon from Warren, Ohio, would start his own shoe line, shop, buy a baby tiger, <laughs> and start his own piano and voice lessons. Cody from Middleborough, Massachusetts, would buy a house in California, a club for young performers, lots of sparkly costumes for the stage, and he would share some money with his grandpa. Joshua Suzanne, a business owner from New York City. <laughs> I guess I don't even need to read it. <laughs> she would buy herself a seat in the Senate, <laughs> then find somebody with even more money to own her ass and hopefully hold people in government accountable for their actions. <laughs> Dwayne wants a car and a wife that would put up with him forever. And Justin from Climax, North Carolina, would quit his job. As I'm guessing some people in the audience would. How do I find out these dreams? My process is really simple. I go to a convenience store, I buy a stack of 50 Mega Million lottery tickets, and I go out into a public place. I ask people if they'd like to take a moment to dream. The people who are willing to write down their dreams for me are given a free lottery ticket. Here's some images of me with Dreamers on 14th Street in New York City, where I participated in the Odd and Art Places project. That man was just getting off of his shift as a transit worker. She was getting her hair dyed. <laughs> I've done the project 12 times, with jackpots varying from $12 million to $363 million. I've met 600 people who've shared their hopes and dreams with me. Of course, there are people who ignore me, people who think that I'm scamming them, people who are in a hurry, and people who don't want to stop and speak with me. But there are people who stop, and those people who are, are aware. They're aware of others in their path, and they're open to possibilities. My gift to them is the opportunity to dream, to dream something bigger than they thought was possible in that moment. I'm interested in interrupting their every day, and causing pause in people's hectic lives. I have two people to thank for interrupting my every day and giving me inspiration for this project. The first woman, Paula, was somebody that I worked with at a museum in South Florida. Paula had immigrated from Jamaica and faced many challenges in her life. We weren't immediately close friends. I remember my first day of work when she handed me my office supplies and sent me on my way. But over time, we developed a close relationship. One afternoon, I was in our office and we were sharing coffee, in her office and we were sharing coffee. And she turned to me and she said, you know what, sometimes I buy a lottery ticket because I dream of getting out of here. I dream of changing the lives of my family and having a new future. And then she said, Jody, if I win, I'm going to pay off your student loans. And that moment, I was overwhelmed by her generosity and honored that her dreams included me. Paul and I have maintained a fantastic friendship that continues to this day. Years later, I had moved to North Carolina. I'm on a long commute to work. It was a cold, dark, rainy day. I'm sure you guys know that day where you just don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to go anywhere. And I had a two-hour drive. I pull into the gas station to get fuel for my car, and I pop in to get a coffee. A gentleman holds the door open for me, and he says, good morning, beautiful. And I felt like a disheveled mess of motherhood, pretty sure that somebody had stuck mucus and milk to my clothes, <laughs> wrinkled that I was going to be late for work. And I said, good morning. And I hurried off to the coffee station, thinking that he wasn't really talking to me. He comes up to the coffee station, preparing his own coffee. And we chat a little bit about the weather. Then he invites me to Jamaica with him. <laughs> Again, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to be late for work. And I say, you know, have a nice day and I scurry off. As I'm about to pull away from the pump, 
as you may have guessed, it's the same man. He's knocking on my window. I look around, do I have my keys or my wallet? Did I leave something at the convenience store? And then I thought, maybe he's going to ask me on a date. He already asked me to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> But instead, he reached in my car and handed me a lottery ticket. And he said, have a wonderful day. Good luck to you. In that moment, that man changed my mood. Instead of me thinking about all the projects I was behind on, leaving my kids at home, the long commute I had ahead, I dreamed of the possibilities of all the possible things that I would do with this money. I had no idea what the jackpot was, but I had this little ticket of hope. And those two hours were something that were incredibly special to me, something that I'll never forget. As an artist, I mind my experiences, and I really think about the ways in which people interact with me, and I hope to pass that on to other people. What I'm hoping to share with you is a little bit of my story so you can think about the ways that you may inspire people that you may interrupt somebody's every day. In my project, Dreams for Free, I've given people lottery tickets. I understand the lottery is problematic. There's all sorts of things that may or may not happen with the money that's raised through that system. But I'm not giving away lottery tickets. I'm giving away moments. I'm giving away hope. I'm giving away an interruption, as you might think. I was able to give away 600 dreams so far to people like Harry from Greensboro, who wants to build a roller coaster between his favorite coffee shop, his house, and his favorite bar. <laughs> Zach wants to pay for his own psychoanalytic therapy and perhaps own a food truck. John. would like to pay his ex-wife to come back to him. And it was quite moving because he had his daughter with him. Katie wants to take a vacation, tropical. <laughs> But she also wants to make her brother Stuart her personal servant. <laughs> For a decent salary. <laughs> And Larry from Gibsonville, who would help other people like himself who have no home. So my hope in sharing this project with you is that you can think about ways that you can interrupt the everyday. Some small act that you can do to the people in your community, to the people in your life, to the people that you know, and maybe the people that you don't know. Is there something that you can do to cause pause in someone's life, in their moment, in their hour, or maybe even change their day? So I'd like to leave you with this question. What can you do to interrupt someone's every day? Thank you. <laughs>